A great man once said that the tone of a piece of fiction, in his case he was talking about written prose, is simply the writer's attitude about the subject matter. Ultimately, that will come through in your piece, and if you're self-aware enough to embrace it, you can elevate the entire work. I take that piece of advice to heart, and that's why I always try to know exactly how I feel about the situations I'm writing before I go to write them. And I think some variation of this is why people are so scared about Kazuya Sudamaki not being on the new Fully Cooley. See, the entire production team was focused on otaku appeal in the making of Fully Cooley, and you can't really forget that. Sudamaki's recently talked about how they tried to appeal to as many different types of otaku as possible, not just the anime Gainax fan otaku. You got vintage guitar otaku, bike otaku, car otaku, and even theater otaku by way of casting stage directors with cult followings for the voice acting. And in the midst of all this, they hit the emotional core of that obsessive nerd demographic, communicating with others and loneliness. But it's how they did it, how Tsurumaki felt about all these things, that turned it into a punk rock style anthem for that set of interests, those emotions, that experience. He turned the loneliness into a longing for the outside world, and devised two characters whose individual stories tell each other. Haruko's arc is highlighted by her one emotional moment with Naota, whose story cannot be told without Haruko. If you like the show, then you probably already know what I mean when I say it's immediately obvious why Naota grows to love Haruko. Not only is she an outlet for everything he's been bottling up inside, but Naota never has to say that. She seems to just be aware of it. It's effortless, the way they communicate after episode 4. And Naota adores this about Haruko. And that's why Tsurumaki said Fully Cooley is a dreamlike anime, because Otaku will watch it and immediately relate, without having to worry about explaining themselves. So can a new staff bring that kind of emotional core to the Fully Cooley brand? Are they that attentive to the optics of the show they're creating? I can only hope, but even then it won't be the same. And any chance of specific otaku appeal is pretty much out the window now that it's a Toonami production. I can't say I don't identify with the staff of the sequel, though. They grew up with Fully Cooley and loved it so much that it influenced their career path, and now they just want to make something that can live up to how they feel about it. I'll leave you now with a reading of Chasing After the Haruko Haruhara Equals Ringo Shina Theory by Kazuya Tsurumaki. A bully girl boom is here! What's that? Bully girl. Is she coming? For the millennium? At the end of this century, how about a bully girl boom? With a bang. But it's not coming. Of course not. That's okay. Bully girl. And I say it heartily. In the end, bullying and being bullied is a form of communication. Because being too real is forbidden. Because it's painful and depressing. It's kind of fun to be messed around with by them, right? Of course, not by ugly ones. For me, I'd pick the aloe yogurt lady. And maybe if I was really tough, Ringo Sheena. Not Noriko. Of course, Noriko Sheena would be good too. Ringo. You think she'd be too tough? Hmm. I think I'd really die. She seems like she'd really hit you with a guitar. And she has a mole. People who are bullied don't need to put any effort into being bullied. It takes effort to stop being bullied, but no effort at all to continue being bullied. Effortless communication. The maid boom is like that too, right? Communication is effortless between the master and the maid. That's because, by contract, all the maid does is wait on people. The master doesn't have to put effort into being waited on. It looks easy. It's a dream for people like me. People who have to put effort into having a conversation with someone. It's that kind of a dream-like anime. That's what Fully Cooley is.